again everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the power stroke. Now this is a cool tip for beginners or even people that have been using an Inkscape for a long time. Um, you can use power stroke on the Bezier tool, the pencil tool, and the spiral tool. I'm not sure about the anything else, but let's just uh, see how it works on each one of these. I'll first create the spiral, and then we can do a pencil tool. Oop, I'm sorry. Pencil tool. One thing you want to maybe do, since you have so many nodes that you're working with on the pencil tool, is uh, hit Control L to get rid of some of the nodes. It'll just work better with the power stroke. And then you can get your uh, Bezier tool and make whatever you want there. Now, to get your power stroke, oops, get your power stroke, I'll first apply it to the spiral, go to path. Path effects, hit the plus sign, and then find your power stroke in here. Make a power stroke out of that. Go to the pencil line, and then do the same with that one, and then do the same with the busy tool line. Okay, so let's go zoom in, and now this. Okay, zoom in, and you'll see that. The spiral tool is now it was one line and what it, the power stroke kind of does is it puts a contour around that line gets rid of the middle line if you go into your edit pass tool you'll see that it has these pink uh, anchor points or nodes or whatever and you can manipulate them make it thicker at various points it's got three of these and one thing you you might want to do when you're using this uh, power stroke is to put fill in there instead of the stroke. And then you can just play around with it how you want. Now this can get kind of funky you have to get used to it and I'm not really totally used to it cuz I'll usually use if I use the power stroke it will be with um with the busy busy tool. Okay, let's go to this one. Zoom in and double click, and you'll see the the uh, the nodes. So you got the same nodes, but they're on the in, right in the middle. Now let's change this to uh, fill. Get rid of the stroke, and again you'll see that you got these pink anchors or whatever you want to call them that helps you or that provide the thickness how much, what kind of thickness you want you know, the and you can slide these around so helps you provide whatever thickness you want now one thing I haven't really talked about yet is that on the cap to start cap you can you can change it to various shapes and uh, something you might often use for the caps would be zero width and to get the actual zero width, you have to move these to make it a little more smooth. You can go to the end and do the same here. Zero width. See right now it's almost squarish. You have to pull it down. Go in here and make it a little more smooth. You can change these. Go through here and look like that. So just play around with it, and and you can do it the exact same thing to this line, which was uh, the press work line that's created with the Bezier tool. Uh, one one thing that I haven't mentioned yet, you can actually change this. Because this is right now more or less an object, you can change it to a path, and then you'll see that it's no longer a power stroke, um, more or less object. It's more of a, it's almost like you know, what you created, uh, an original Bezier line that went all the way around. It's more or less just like a contour. 
So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Bye-bye.